Another high-profile Republican took a pass on running for president today when New Jersey Governor Chris Christie put an end to all of that speculation that he might actually consider a run for office, the one he said he wouldn't. Anyway, this is one of a handful of topics we're going to tackle with our insiders. They are veterans of the New York political scene who join us each week to provide some insight and analysis into what's happening in the Empire State and beyond. With us tonight is Dave Catalfamo. He served as Governor Pataki's communications director. He is now a senior partner at Capital Public Strategies. Across the table, Bruce Jory, it's like the old gang here, who was a senior advisor to, not old, old, two, never mind, two Democratic governors. Now he spends his time consulting for Corning Place Consultants. He's also an adjunct professor at UAlbany. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. What I mean is, I'm not even going to try and dig myself out of that hole. Old, yeah, okay, right. no, yeah. no. Let's start with Chris Christie. Obviously, not a big surprise. I mean, he, even he said so himself. The answer was no, then it was not no, but it was never really not no. I'm mm. not running. And it took him an hour to tell us all of that. Right. So what does this mean? It means that the media has failed to create a candidate that they wanted. And oh, that it's they, always that, the media's fault. Well, the, 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 the media, me, the media did, to a large degree, try to create a candidate to help fill a void that the candidates that are currently in the race have not filled, right. you know, for a variety of reasons. But, you know, you have to give... Uh, Governor Christie, a tip of the hat, in that you know he was elected 20 months ago to be the governor of New Jersey, and he feels he has an obligation to the residents of New Jersey and the voters of New Jersey to, to carry out his his term. and And I got to give him a, a lot of credit for that because I don't know that he'll get another time or another opportunity as good as this one is for him to actually seek a national office. Well, he might end up in 2016 against Andrew Cuomo. No? He, he may, but I think two things weigh against that. One is that you know when we have a little experience with this, being a Republican governor of uh, uh, democratic state uh, requires you to do things in order to stay in office that are ne not necessarily in keeping with the national conservative Republican electorate, so I think it'll be harder. Um, two is that his frankness and candor, which is something that everybody loves right now, is something that can grow old. We've right. seen it with other you know, politicians with similar sorts of makeup. So this, I think, was a moment in time for him. I, you know, you never say never, um, but clearly he had a, he had a, a shot here. His, I, I agree with you, and credit to Christie for knowing himself. He felt he wasn't ready. He was honest and mm -hmm. said so, mm -hmm. and he didn't let himself get flattered into the race. The time for him, though, to get have gotten into the race was three, four months ago, when before the field had kind of settled, and when the cat, when it was early enough to be able to, in effect, carve out a strategic path to the nomination. He would have started so far behind in yeah. terms of raising money, having to raise in increments of 2500 the filing deadlines, position uh, uh, to be briefed on positions, to learn foreign policy given he had no experience. It would have been very tough for him. The guy who, who is uh, smiling tonight is Mitt Romney because uh, Christie would have been a real threat to him uh, in, in the North and the Midwest yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. and it would have given Perry a chance to kind of not be the story for a, for a month till right. Christie, you know, if Christie had come in right, and, yeah. and then maybe resettled. So now the race turns into a long slog yeah. between these two in a in a newly proportional representation oh, so system. So boring. So boring. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. But, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. But, and that's another thing. If Christie, if it had been the old system, it had been winner take all. Christie said, maybe I can get up some momentum and just run the table okay. early and knock two, everybody two out. Things. He couldn't do that. Two things. Also, this comes at a time when the GOP is shifting around like crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. soon, next thing you know, we're going to have New Hampshire in December. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. because they are hell bent, and you can't you can't blame them on, on defending their first in the nation primary status. And you got everybody up else creeping. We saw the same thing four years ago. Right. This time it looks real. They're losing delegates, and they don't care. So that's the first thing. And we're seeing, to your point about Rick Perry, don't you think that this story? I know that. The ranch story, et cetera, is really bad. But don't and his performance is bad. Don't you think that the story might change? Report now is that he has raised maybe somewhere in fifteen million dollar oh, yeah. range. That is some significant game changer numbers. Look, uh, um, you basically called me old before, and I'm going to prove ah. you right. <laughs> Barry Goldwater got off to an awful start in 1964, and. So kind of recovered his balance, got the nomination. Ronald Reagan st stumbled very badly out of the gate That's over right. TVA and Social Security in 1976 and came within a hair's breadth of, of taking the nomination from an incumbent president, although not an elected one, Gerald Ford. So anybody who's writing off Rick Perry is, is just as wrong as the people who were ready to coronate him a month ago. Mm. This is going to be a long, drawn-out battle, right. and the thing to keep an eye on because one of the top two is likely to fall off in this is 
who is the last challenger standing who's picking up a lot of delegate votes at the end, like Jesse Jackson did with Michael Dukakis mm -hmm. in 1988, mm -hmm. who was in a position to have changes made to the platform and, and accommodations made, or might run third party. Okay. Keep your eye on Ron Paul, keep your eye on Herman Cain. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Herman Cain, who in one poll that I saw this morning oh, was actually God. neck and neck with yeah. uh, Perry. with Perry, right? 16%. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's just shift it and, uh, sure. and we'll do the segue this mm -hmm. way. 2016, you say that it might be difficult for a guy, when we don't know, it's so far from now, sure. but for a guy like Christie, because he's forced to do things to get reelected, he's a freshman, right. moderate, in uh, at a time when the Tea Party is dominating, we don't know that the Tea Party will be dominant. In 2016, though, if he goes up against a guy like Andrew Cuomo, who's been moderate to the point of fiscal conservatism, it's like the two of them are made for each other. It's, but it's such a long way off. Well, True. look, they could, they could argue about their stewardship of the Port Authority, which they share. Yes. So, you know, I mean, that would be an who, who raised taxes. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. No, they can both claim credit for it. Good point. Um, I, I think it's so long off, I don't know that it really bears a conversation right okay. now, because I think so. the world will change dramatically. Okay, so let's know. talk about some things that are more uh, immediate. Let's talk, for example, about the Occupy Wall Street mm -hmm. situation. I had some folks on last night from the left who are, of course, supportive of Occupy Wall Street, in part mm -hmm. because they feel like, and it may be, uh, that the narrative has turned away from fiscal conservatism to the nth degree right. and perhaps towards tax the rich, which could be problematic for the governor. Yeah, can, uh, I'm going to take some issue with that. Just, just, as I would, no, just as I would with the Tea Party. I think people wanted to try to define Tea Party uh, movement as something that was defined by conservative you know, Republicans. It, it really wasn't. It was Americans, New Yorkers, who are basically disaffected with big government. They're alienated. What I think we see in the Occupy Wall Street are folks who are alienated with big business and who think that big business have an outside, outside impact on our governance and on our economy. Well, so don't I think, they? Well, uh, and does big government. I, I think so. Actually, I think they're both coming from very similar places. They're both alienated. I don't think that they are necessarily left as in a labor union left okay. or, or party, or, well, or party well, identified may be, left. That I, may be, but don't you think that the Tea Party has forced the institution of the Republican Party to the right? And this operation could force the institution of the Democratic Party to the left. Um, much tougher to do with an incumbent president who mm -hmm. is who, who is pretty much locked in and they're not going to be able to take, and no, nor do they want to take the nomination away from him. What I think we're seeing though is, is Andrew Ross Sorkin had a very interesting column to in the New York Times where he said this is a delayed reaction Wall Street, mm -hmm. because there was so much political controversy mm -hmm. focused on government, Wall Street never became the lightning rod that public opinion polls would tell you they were. The only thing more more unpopular than, than Washington today is, is, is Wall Street, so you're getting that. And the media. But the real anger, <laughs> Uh, the real anger, I wasn't going there, the real anger, true. the is real was? anger, no, 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 <laughs> but the real anger to be worried about is neither the anger in the Tea Party on the right or what we're seeing, though it's going to be important mm -hmm. because it will affect people, it's the anger in the middle. Right. The mm -hmm. shocking thing is the, is the quiet, sullen anger of the middle of the country that feels that the politicians and elected officials are not listening to them, yeah. both parties, and, and, are, okay. and, are, and are smacking out at anything, at anything that comes up. And I would, just, I would suggest that if those people get sullen and angry and decide to take themselves out of the process, then the two extremes are governing the process. Well, but, but, but their check is, and, and you're right, and I would argue that letting independents vote in primaries might be a good thing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but their check is they will determine based on who they vote against is to who wins. If so, they vote at all. Th well, but the but the voters in the center right now are all high indicia of voting. They're mm -hmm. they're older. They're uh, they're they're fairly well educated. They have income, and these people are going to vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does this mean for for the governor for the legislature going forward into the upcoming session? I think if and I, I did watch your program last night. So I think if organized labor and some of the interests on the left are able to capture that energy of the Occupy Wall Street and actually translate that into organized 
recognized support, I think that that actually would have an impact on the dialogue and on the agenda this year. You know, much like I think happened on the right with the Tea Party, in that there were forces that actually helped harness that and move it into mainstream uh, uh, politics. Which so, we're seeing tomorrow when the institution of labor, organized right. labor, is going to join with the institution or well, with the messy situation, which has no message, which has no center mm -hmm. of Occupy Wall Street, although it has moved all across the country for various different but, but disparate. A, but I think there's a message. There, the message is it's not okay to rip off the American taxpayers and tank our economy and leave us with you know borderline 10 percent unemployment and then go around making record profits again. I mean that is the message. Yeah, and but that, that, yeah. that's not okay. Okay, you know? but but that's not okay is a mantra and not a solution, right? Right. Correct. And and, and the problem is, it, but it. it but this pressure that we're seeing is not likely to, to be, the fulcrum of that is not likely to be the New York State budget. This is going to be a federal issue. The jobs bill, this could easily, if labor has its way, it could easily get harnessed into building uh, the public pressure for, for passing the jobs bill. Or, or, although, or people may give up on Washington. Or people I mean, may give up on Especially with, with where we are right now and actually look to the states to, to create solutions. Right, yeah. which is actually be good for the Cuomo administration yeah. because it is actually demonstrated that New York State government, sort of the poster child of dysfunction, can in fact act in a functional manner, yeah, although the bar true. was so low right. that, you know, uh, this, that's why the governor, it'll be interesting to see, after picking off all of his, and some of them were quite difficult, I'm not suggesting mm -hmm. that they weren't, gay marriage, for example, mm -hmm. difficult tax cap, convincing the Assembly def Democrats difficult. After picking all that off, where do you go? You got yeah. difficult stuff. You got redistricting reform and yeah. some kind of compromise. You got gambling expansion that you're talking about. You got mandate hydro relief. fracking, a big problem. You got mandate relief. You've yeah. got big, difficult issues mm -hmm. that are still out there, and they're messy. They're they're yes, messy. They are very messy, very difficult. And the question is, can any governor uh, cr uh, credibly? Um, move forward on the jobs initiative. What, 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 if you look at, if you peek beneath the public opinion polling data, people are really saying, we want jobs. Mm. We want the economy to grow. Right. Ultimately, we, we want deficits to go down, but we know growth is a part of that. Mm. And, and, yeah. and, and what they're seeing right. is no one is focusing they blame Obama and the Democrats for focusing too much on health care. Mm -hmm. They're mad at the Republicans now for focusing on yeah. on Medicare right. and, social, and debating yeah. Social Security. Okay, so before so, we run out of time, yeah, then, sorry. let me put this last question to you. What If people are really concerned about jobs and yes. you look at the polling data, then what does it mean when they look at an administration that has a fight with a union and lays off 3,500 people? Oh, no, the public opinion there is totally on the side. It, it, they didn't lay them off by choice. They, right. <laughs> public opinion will look at that and say, the union rank and file, by not ratifying the agreement that had been ratified by the Shot other unions, the chose, right. chose pink slips for themselves. Do you agree? I agree. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a pretty pretty straight shot. I yeah. mean, they, uh, they had the opportunity to take a contract that I think most folks in the private sector would say is goes along with the times. Which right. Are difficult. Yeah. 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 And some even would say generous. So. Yeah. Yeah. so we shall see how that plays out. I don't think it's over by a long shot yeah. yet. In the meantime, Dave Catalfamo, thank you very thank much. You. And Bruce Jordan, thank thanks. You. Good to have the old guard back. <laughs> Just kidding. We resemble that remark. <laughs>